So in a widely popular tutorial titled SPSS in 15 minutes, I gave you the basics of working with SPSS. We started with how to create variables and enter data all the way to how you can perform some basic statistical analysis and charts, which we mostly did using the frequency procedure. In the video, we only tackled how you can summarize a single variable on its own. For example, we calculated frequencies for categorical variables like gender. For continuous variables like age, we calculated summary statistics like the mean, the median, and the standard deviation. If you haven't watched that lesson yet, I have included a link in the description below for you to check that out. In this tutorial, I would like to show you now how you can get started exploring relationships between two variables. In the end, you have a framework that you can use on any dataset when looking for relationships between two variables. I've included a link to download the file that I'm using here for the tutorial in the description below. So go ahead and download it and let's start working. To decide what kind of analysis to use when exploring relationships between variables, we're going to be using measurement levels. In simple terms, the measurement level of a variable is the way in which the values within that variable are related to each other. Let's start it from the top. Data is usually broadly categorized into two types, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative variables use words as their values, for example, gender, marital status, religious affiliation, and so on. Quantitative variables, on the other hand, use numbers as their values. The most important thing here is that the numbers actually refer to a quantity that is being measured. That's why the name quantitative. So for example, age, which is a quantity of time, distance, weight, money, number of people, and so on. Now within qualitative variables, which are also known as categorical variables, we have two measurement levels. If your variable is qualitative, that is, it uses words as values or responses. So just ask yourself, can the values be ranked in the order of quantity or quality? If the answer is yes, then that is an ordinal variable, ordinal from the word order. The values in an ordinal variable use words to measure a quantity or level of something. For example, if you are trying to measure satisfaction, we can use words like not satisfied, somewhat satisfied, and very satisfied. As we move from not satisfied to very satisfied, you can sense an increase in something, satisfaction. There's more satisfaction in very satisfied than in somewhat satisfied. So satisfaction measured this way is an all in variable. Education level, level of agreement, or level of confidence are all ordinal variables. Someone who did tertiary education has more education than someone who stopped at primary school. I hope you now get the point. On the other hand, if the values in the qualitative variable cannot be rank ordered, that is a nominal variable. A classic example there is gender. So the values male and female cannot be rank ordered. Female is not a level of gender. So there you have it. Variables whose values are words, qualitative variables, can be ordinal if the values can be rank ordered. Otherwise, if not, then they are nominal. Now let's jump to the other side, quantitative variables. In SPSS, all quantitative variables are called scale variables. These are now numeric variables that typically have a unit of measurement, and each value there stands for a quantity that is being measured. I have already given examples such as age, money, height, width, distances, and so on. Now let's look at the measurement levels of the variables in this data set. IDs, are they numbers? Yes, they are numbers. Are they a quantity of something? Absolutely not. We are literally using them in place of names. So let's treat this variable the same way we would a variable with names of people. So this variable is actually nominal. Switch to the variable view, and we will change the measure for ID to nominal. Age of respondent. If you switch the data view, you see that actually these are number of years. So age is numeric, and it's measuring the quantity of time in years as a unit of measurement. That's a scale variable. So let's switch variable view and switch to scale on the variable age. Sex has two categories, male and female, and we already said that the categories are not levels of sex, so that's nominal, all right. Now, the education variable represents levels of education, from no education to tertiary education. So just as we have discussed, that's an ordinal variable. I'll leave you to decide the measurement levels for the rest of the variables. 
So now let's start looking at the way in which we explore relationships between these three measurement levels, starting with categorical variables versus scale variables. As an example, what's the relationship between sex, which is a categorical variable, and age, which is a scale variable? The best procedure in SPSS for this kind of relationship is the means procedure. Our goal is to compare summary statistics like mean and standard deviation for the variable age across categories of sex. So go to analyze, compare means, means. Our scale variables go in the dependent list, while the categorical variables go in the independent list. So age of respondent goes at the top. And then sex of respondent goes in the independent list. Let's look at the options. By default, we'll get the mean, number of cases, and standard deviation. I think let's add the median. Down below here, we can even turn on the option to display the ANOVA table. We'll keep that for later. Now let's click continue. Click OK. And we get an output which says that the average age for females was about 31 years, and while for males it was 36. So we can roughly say that our male sample is generally a bit older than that of the female sample. To say that for sure, we'll need to do some inferential statistics, which we will look at in another video. Now, I'll leave you to explore the relationship between head of household and average monthly income. Also, check out the relationship between education and income. That'll be interesting. Now, let's jump to relationship between one categorical variable and another categorical variable. In our dataset, we may want to look at the relationship between sex and education. The question we are trying to answer here is how many females only completed primary school or go to secondary school and so on. And the base procedure to answer that is cross tabs, which is simply a table with categories of one variable in the columns and the categories of the other variable in the rows. Where a column crosses a row, you will have the core frequency or count of that category combination. So let's go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. I usually put the variable with the most categories in the rows. That would be level of education. Sex of respondent will go to the columns. Let's click OK to see the default output. Nice. Within the female category, 15 have never had an education, while the majority, which is 159, only finished primary school. 61 females went to secondary school, and only 2 did some tertiary education. You can easily compare that with the male counterpart. Now, your analytical mind has most probably already told you that there is a problem with that comparison. There's way more females than there are males in the data set. So how about we look at percentages within each category of sex instead? So we'll go back to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. To turn on percentages, we click Cells. The numbers we're looking at are called Observed Counts. We want to turn on Column Percentages, which is where the sex variable is. If we want percentages within each category of the row variable, in our case, Level of Education, we'll check Row here. Click Continue, and then click OK. Now, in addition to the observed counts, we have column percentages. It says here, percent within sex of respondent. Since these are percentages within sex of respondent, each percentage should be interpreted as being out of the total in the column in which it is. So, 6.3% of sex of respondent, which in this case is female, have had no education. Compare that with 3.2% of males who have had no education. 67% of females only did up to primary school. Now compare that with 48.4% of males who only did up to primary school. Go ahead and continue in that manner. Finally, let's talk about how to explore relationships between one scale variable and another scale variable. The question we want to answer with this relationship is what happens to one scale variable when the other scale variable increases? Does it increase too, or does it decrease, or does it roughly stay the same? If you have done a bit of statistics, you probably already figured it out that that's a correlation. We only have two scale variables in our data set, age and income. So let's use those as an example. Go to Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate.
Bivariate means two variables. So that's a correlation between two variables. We will drag and drop all the variables we are trying to correlate to the right hand side. Click OK. In the output, we have the two variables both in the columns as well as in the rows. Our focus should be on the cell where one variable is crossing the other variable. So we can use this one or we can also use this one. The columns where each variable is being correlated with itself are well useless. Now, the Pearson correlation symbolized as a lowercase letter r is called the coefficient of the correlation. It's going to take values between 0 and 1. If a value is positive, it means an increase in one variable is associated also with an increase in the other variable. If we plot that on a chart, it's going to look like this. A line starting at the bottom and going up. This point is low on the x-axis variable, but it's also low on the y-axis variable. If we choose another point up, that point will be high on the x-axis, also high on the y-axis. So the further we go on the x-axis, the higher we go on the y-axis. Positive linear relationship. If the number is negative, then the two values go opposite direction. That means an increase in one value is associated with a decrease in the other value. The chart is going to look like this. This point is low on the x-axis, but it's very high on the y-axis. If you go further, this point is now high on the x-axis, but see it's now lower on the y-axis. Now, apart from the direction of the correlation, which is shown by whether the value is negative or it's positive, as we have seen here, the value itself tells us if the association is weak or if it's strong. Let's put that on a number line. Values of R that are closer to zero mean that the correlation is very, very weak. Strong relationships are said to be the ones above positive or negative 0 0.7. So in our case, the value negative 0 0.009 means that we have an extremely low but negative association. We can easily say that there's no correlation whatsoever. It's almost as if, if age increases, nothing really happens to income linearly. Now that's it for exploring relationships between variables. If you loved the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. We have lined up great tutorials you don't want to miss. If you're looking for more lessons, courses and great free resources, check out our website datafordave.com. We also have a practice lab with data, some instructions and quiz to help you practice and master what you have learned here. The links are in the description below, so go check that out and bye.